Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to um, the train the trainer on Thursday, September twenty first, two thousand twenty three. Um, our goal today is to um, not only present the materials that we've created over the past year, uh, some of the reasoning behind it, and some uh, good methodology uh, that we used or that we are going to be using um, for the presentation and how to do the presentation. So this isn't a training you the way that we will a month from now on um on October 19th, which is the actual International Conflict Resolution Day. Um, our goal will be to um, walk you through how we're going to do the presentation and how we're going to do the training and some of the reasoning behind it. So it's a really in-depth look. Uh, but before we kind of get into that, I'd like to uh, introduce the rest of the panel here. Um, and uh, we'll start with you, Yas, if you could introduce yourself. And um, uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Hi, I'm Yasapina Samji, and I'm co-chair with us uh, with Cindy uh, for CRD Day Committee, and I'm delighted to be here. Thanks, Don. Excellent, Cindy. Yes, Cindy doesn't want to uh, introduce herself. Well, Cindy is 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 great. She's a co-chair. We all love her. She's fantastic. I'm here. I'm just not visual because you, my Mr. Host, has to make me visual. But that's okay, because uh, glitches happen, and I don't need to be seen. <laughs> so there we go. you should be able to be seen now. Oh, really? You make me do this? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Cindy, and I am co-chair of the CRD committee. Welcome to Train the Trainer. Excellent. And uh, we also have helping us out um, this year is Paulette uh, DeKelper. Uh, so Paulette, if you could please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to join you. I'm a, a new face on the CRD committee over the last couple of years, and I'm slowly figuring out how all of it works. And it's just uh, an honor to be here. Um, and there's many other people, uh, and, and thank you everybody for, for being here. And we have many other people as part of the committee uh, that helped um, um, create these th this material. This isn't just, uh, this is a full committee that works throughout the whole year. And as we tweak and work and get the feedback really from all of you trainers and from the people being trained on October or on the conflict resolution day, uh, it really does help. And so there's a much larger team. Um, I, I'd be, uh, I'm scared to name everybody because if I do, I know I'll miss somebody. But uh, to keep in mind, uh, this is this is a whole committee that works as part of the Dispute Resolution Network in Alberta um, and a lot of uh, NGOs and, and um, uh, charitable organizations that help make this happen and a lot of volunteer work um, and volunteer time. Um, so all that being said, we look forward to seeing, hopefully, some of you uh, want to join our committee next year. I am the past uh, co-chair uh, of the Conflict Resolution Day Committee. And of course, Cindy and Yas are the chairs, the co-chairs this year. And uh, it's been an honor working with them. Um, now, as we kind of go into it, we've updated, as you can see, uh, I'm just going to share my screen again. We have updated some of the um, uh, visuals uh, for this year, which is great. Um, and um, we're, we're, we're hoping to continue to do that. We're going to be doing some polls through QR codes. We're hoping to test those with you. Um, but for the purposes of this training, I actually won't be using the presentation screen that we would be using uh, in October 19th. Instead, I have a dual monitor set up. So what I see on one screen is what you just saw. And then on another screen, what I have is this. So what this shows me is it shows me on the left here, what uh, slide the viewers is seeing. It shows me on the right, the next slide that we have up. And then it also has on the bottom right, all the notes that we need for the presentation. So as I move forward, um, so now what everybody would see is the apology unraveled. That's the screen that they would see uh, uh, large. Now I have all the notes here on the right and we've done and we continue to do uh, a really good job if I do, uh, um, um, to be able to give you a full script. If you were to follow this script, alone, you would be able to um, um, competently work through the training that we've delivered. 
Now this year, um, we've also done a little bit extra and a little bit more in terms of we have tied in the last, uh, the training from, I would say the last four or five years. Um, and so we do callbacks to those previous trainings. Now on the uh, conflictresolutionday.ca website, all those trainings, the train the trainer videos are there, the YouTube videos are there, and all the resources in terms of the polls, the PowerPoint presentations, the worksheets, all of that is easily downloadable. If somebody, if you wanted to continue this, because this is at the tail end of a lot of the other training that we've done, right? From kindness and communication from uh, minding our own bias. All of those things lead into what we believe is sort of that final sort of all-encompassing training, which is the apology unraveled. Now the notes here, you guys as, or, or, or you have the ability to go through this training uh, and update the notes as you see fit. So welcome to the annual celebration of Conflict Resolution Day. My name is blank, Don Shapira, and I am joined by my co-presenter, Yasafina Sanji. Thank you for joining us. And as we go through it, there's going to be a lot of different things that you're comfortable with. For example, if you're doing this in person, we're not going to have to worry about the chat feature in Zoom. But for the purposes of this training, we do, uh, I'm looking forward to being interrupted uh, by our participants. If you have any questions, please use the chat or even the Q&A. Uh, we will have some live transcript um, issues, uh, or not issues, uh, but opportunities. And I also just want to start right now the captions. There we go. So even if you do have to put me on mute, which uh, Yasafina does regularly, uh, at least you have captions here at the bottom uh, to be able to move through this. This year, the land acknowledgement, um, we are, uh, and we are going to do it, Paulette, we're going to do a run through of that. Um, the land acknowledgement, as you know, is, is, is quite an important piece. We brought Paulette in um, um, to help us with it this year, and uh, it is my absolute pleasure to turn uh, the attention over to Paulette right now. So please. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Don. Um, I'm really excited to do the land acknowledgement. Um, this is a, a very meaningful exercise for me, and um, it's a real pleasure to share this uh, with this group. Uh, so today I acknowledge that I am learning and I am humble. I am joining you from land that is now known as the city of Edmonton. I acknowledge that Edmonton is located on Region 4 of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I acknowledge that south of what is now known as the city of Edmonton is Musquatchies, a community that serves four First Nations. They are Erminskin, Samson, Louis Bull, and Montana. My goal with the land acknowledgement that I'm presenting is to honor and respect Indigenous communities and to help repair relationships between settlers and Indigenous communities. I am a devotee of nature and being in nature. By acknowledging the land that we are on, I acknowledge the Indigenous peoples who took care of this land for a very, very long time. I am continuing my own internal reconciliation journey so that when I interact with Indigenous peoples, I am accountable for my own issues and my own feelings so that I can be present and show up and see and hear others in their journeys. Thank you for your attention and for sharing this. Dawn? Thank you very much, Paulette. That was, um, that was quite humbling. Um, we also have a script uh, that is in the notes, as you can see in the bottom right, should you wish to do your own land acknowledgement, please, we, we, we encourage you to do so. This slide right here, it's to talk about a little bit of the history of Conflict Resolution Day. Now, the history of Conflict Resolution Day, uh, we've been doing this since 2007, I believe. Um, I've been part of this for the last five or six years. It's been a, it's been a real pleasure. The point of it is that we start talking about that this is an annual and international 
celebration. It is an opportunity to pick up new skills. It is an opportunity to look at things from a different perspective. And those are very important aspects of what we're doing. The underlying training that we offer is always to be offered at no charge. We want this to go out to the community and our own, uh, in all communities, um, as easily and as with as much accessibility as humanly possible. Now, getting into the introduction again, what the and I'm going to share uh, just again, just to remind everybody, this is what everybody is seeing. Okay. Um, and this is what I'm focused on looking at. So it is a little bit different um, than what everybody would be seeing. So again, what you're seeing in the top left is 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 the training, and then we're just in that little box in the upper right hand corner. We have been very careful in the definitions that we use. Overarching, and I don't think that we've really spent a lot of time on this in previous Train the Trainer, a we're defining words that could technically be defined in different ways depending on the context. The reason we're defining words in very specific ways is that we're all speaking the same language. We could disagree about the exact definition, but for our purposes, we're using uh, definitions in this workshop from Merriam-Webster, unless otherwise is noted. So we're going to be talking about and we're going to be stretching some of those ideas throughout this training and you'll get an idea uh, of what we're talking about again we want to start taking a look at what we're going to be doing we're going to be unraveling the apology what does that mean how do we apologize and 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 why is it important um we're going to be and this is the full table of contents so we're going to start right into um, a couple of exercises um So we want to reflect on the apologies we've experienced in our own lives, okay? So we're going to take a look at the next few slides. And there are, if you would prefer to use the handouts or you want to have a group discussion about these things, that's what we encourage. For our purposes, next month, what I'll be doing is I'll just kind of be putting it out there. And I hope you'll engage with me right now. This is what we're looking at. I am truly sorry for poking fun at you, although it wasn't my intention to hurt your feelings. I recognize that, what my, that my words were hurtful. And what can I do to make this better? Now, we're going to take a look at the chat. We would like to know from you. Is this a good apology? And Don, as you've indicated, we can use the chat feature. Next month, we plan on using the poll function so that people can see the results of um, the tabulation of their answers. But for today's purposes, we will be using the chat function. All right. So I look forward and, and, and we really want to hear from you. So is this a good apology? Example one. Again, I'll repeat. I am truly sorry for poking fun at you, although it wasn't my intention to hurt your feelings. I recognize that my words were hurtful. What can I do to make this better? Now, we're also going to assume that there's an, a, a little bit of a nicer tone than me just kind of reading a, a blank piece of paper. Um, so let's take a look here. This is how you apologize to me every day, Don. I, so I, I'm really, truly sorry. I don't mean to apologize. See, that is that is just bad. That's friendly banter, folks. It's friendly banter. Um, so what do we have here in some of the chat? So I see most people are saying it looks good overall. We have a few thumbs up. One of the earlier comments was that it might be a bit too expedited. Okay. Okay. And good overall is the general feeling of the group. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. I had no right to yell at you. You didn't deserve it. I understand that if you are upset and I want you to know that I will work hard to regain your trust and respect. What do you guys think of that one? I also see uh, Tracy raised her hand. Can you see that, Yes. Actually, I can't. Hmm. So Tracy, if you could put in the chat your comment, that would be great. And I see that Cindy indicates that this uh, apology works. It can be adapted. I think one of the interesting things, when we start taking a look at the previous apology, where it says, I'm truly sorry for poking fun at you. Uh, 
And these next two, and we'll kind of do both at once, uh, where it also says, I know I shouldn't have done that. I know I probably should have asked you first. I know I can sometimes be a bull in a china shop. Where? And, and sorry to interrupt, Don. Tracy's indicated if I'm the Tracy, I didn't raise my hand. So we're good. All right, we're good. We'll just continue. And Vicky's indicated that uh, she thinks, uh, Vicky thinks that this apology looks good. And at the same time, nobody deserves to be yelled at. It's a good point. It's a very good point. I wanted to in 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 why where we started moving with these three apologies in terms of being able to train and see their reactions is there's one thing missing from example two that is an example one nowhere in example two is the words I'm sorry or I apologize so considering that can we apologize without ever saying I apologize or I am sorry so what is an apology? How do we unravel that? You know, I know I shouldn't have done that. I know I probably should have asked you first. I know I sometimes can be a bull in a china shop. That is also now a little bit of a different one. There's a lot of acknowledgement. Is acknowledgement, in your opinion, folks, is an acknowledgement enough? So those are some questions. And it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to really consider what are all aspects of an apology. Okay, so let's start taking a look at, um, okay, here we go. Let's start taking a look at the components of an apology, okay? Let's break the apology into, into the parts. So we're going to show you some clips here, and we just have a very fun video here. Uh, I don't think I can play it here. No, so I'm just going to share the screen. Sorry. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Now, this video continues for quite a bit. One of the interesting aspects, if you're a movie buff as I am, it is each one of those apologies was the same words, if you will. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But based on their tone, based on the context of the clip, based on the situation that they were in, some of those apologies might have been really, really good, and some of them really, really bad. At least one of those apologies was, I'm sorry, I'm about to kill you. Right. So it's 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 so there's a lot of different ways that we can start taking a look at apologies, but we're just used to having media. We're used to seeing in movies that I'm sorry usually is just that's enough. We don't really have to go into a whole lot more detail. The truth is in our relationships, in our interpersonal relationships, we need to definitely go on and, and, and explore that a little bit more. We, we can set boundaries with an apology. It's a fantastic. So, um, sorry, go ahead, guys. Yeah, Randy Lee makes a really good point, indicating that they believe that people can say sorry, but not give an authentic apology, which I think goes right to what you're saying, Don. Exactly, exactly. And that's and that's what we're trying to say, is that an apology is actually a, um, a really, um, can be a really powerful thing that brings people together. A poor apology, however, can be one of those things that can really be destructive in a relationship. So when we start taking a look at what the anatomy of a apology is, you have to identify. Here is exactly what I regret. You have to empathize. And we're going to discuss a little bit about how to do all these steps, how to identify, how to empathize, how to analyze, and how to plan. Um, empathize, of course, we're, we, we go into uh, a little bit of uh, detail there. And some of this, again, is going to be callbacks to previous training so you can actually have from this training multiple trainings right where you can go into further detail on all of this and it's really important especially for people who might be joining the conflict uh resolution day training for the first time to let them know of these resources you analyze here's why i did what i did and then plan here's how i'm planning changes so it's less likely to happen again 
And again, here throughout this, we've given a breakdown to you to help in your discussion with the listeners, with the people in the workshop. So identify, here's exactly what I regret. What does that do? It helps you own your part in the situation. So it just gives that extra little bit of information for you to be able to use as you're going through the training. This is something that I wanted to add. And again, there's a lot of um, additional resources um, to this. We have uh, a wonderful, and I have to share this because this is probably my favorite video of all time. Um, is that, oh, it's it's on the next slide. So I'll be able to do that. Um, Canada has a couple of things. And this part is really important. So I actually do want to pull up the Apology Act here. And so there is this theory out there that uh, ca uh, Canadians are very apologetic. We're, we're, we're known through that. You see that in a lot of movies that Canadians apologize all the time. Has anybody heard this just by a quick, you know, raise your hand or show your hand or, or, or lower it? Just just give a quick thumbs up. Yeah, everybody's heard uh, of the uh, the the, Can the Canadians are, are, are great apologizers. I disagree. I disagree. What I think is that in in regular, you know, let's even call it idiosyncratic speech, Canadians use the word I'm sorry instead of the words excuse me. You bump into somebody or you want to get past somebody in line or you're in Safeway and you want to reach for that Timmy's coffee. You say I'm sorry instead of excuse me or pardon me. It's part of the language that we use here. It's not necessarily an apology. So that's where the Apology Act needed to be updated in Canada to reflect that an apology doesn't necessarily mean that you are accepting responsibility for an action. Because in, and I, I actually, yes, I'm going to have you talk about this a little bit more uh, because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. So, um, and uh, you're very much, you're so much better at this part than I am. So please. You're on mute, huh? Despite being on Zoom sessions almost every day since COVID has started, I still made that same mistake that I think I'm never going to do again, right? Right, right. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I am a lawyer by profession. And certainly one of the things that we find is that people are concerned about making apologies due to liability concerns. And so this is just an area that we reflect on, indicating that in Canada, this um, Apology Act was introduced so that any sort of expression of sympathy or regret is not an admission or fault or liability on the person um, suggesting that they're, uh, they're sorry. Otherwise, can you imagine how many Canadians would be in trouble, Don? I think that would be me every day. Right. Right. And, and and it's something that that goes to say an apology needs to be a whole lot more than just an I'm sorry. And we're going to take a look now at a quick video. This is probably one of my favorites. If anybody here is a Cheech and Chong fan, you'll also enjoy my uh, my enjoyment in this. Uh, and I just want to make sure, actually, that it's just the full screen. Perfect. Mr. Christie always, and of course, it was the an ad is always great. It was right there. There I'm so sorry. Boys, it's been a terrible mistake. Uh, Howie is going to say something to you, aren't you, Howie? I'm going to get you out of this as quickly as possible. Howie, now save, come on now, save your little I'm thing. sorry I took the money. That's it. I'm sorry I took the money. I'm sorry!
So uh, it, it, the point of uh, is just to show I'm sorry is never enough. I'm and Don, so oh, sorry. Go ahead, Don. No, please go ahead. Yes. I was just going to say that um, before you move on from this slide, Lisa has asked that going back to slide 12, can you speak a little bit to the analyze part? If you note in our speaking notes, Don, we have um, amalgamated points at uh, three and four. Uh, analyze and plan is as a vow to do better. So she's asking if you can elaborate on that area. So the next, in, 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 I guess, in what respect? So what you want to do is analyze, here's why I did what I did, right? One of the biggest reasons I believe that we don't apologize correctly is, if we go to the next slide, that admission of guilt. It's if I have to apologize, it means I did something bad and I'm a bad person. We can do something with good intention, yet achieve a bad result. Right? That's where that, that saying, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. We can try. We could say, I did this. I was really hoping that you would appreciate what I did. But I also realize that the outcome turned out differently than what my intent was. So now I want to plan with you to ensure how we can communicate better. How do we ensure that something like this does not occur again? Because if this is my intention and this over here is the outcome, it means that we weren't that my my actions weren't aligned with my intent. So this vow to do better is to communicate with you to do better, to ensure that you don't have either this feeling or this negative outcome that you experience. So now there's no admission on my part that I did something bad because I am i don't like you or I'm mad at you or I'm upset with you or I don't respect you. It's I did something and there may have been a communication breakdown in terms of what my intent was and what the outcome was. Does that make sense? And 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 Vicky, uh, so how, how do we want to do this? Is, 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 do we need Vicky just to type something? Because I see her hand up again. I think Vicky's hand up was from the last time when we were doing sort of like a check with the group and it was Lisa's question. So hoping Lisa, it, did this address your um, question? She says, Don sure, Don. Thanks, Lisa. Don Dawn, if I can um, interject and request that questions go in the Q&A, it'll be easier because I'll moderate those. People can still make comments in the chat, but if they have specific questions, use the Q&A icon and we'll, we'll be better at capturing. Right. And I'm just kind of also thinking that perhaps we, we even just switch over into more of a webinar where we can see everybody because as a trainer, the trainer, perhaps some dialogue and feedback back and forth might be helpful. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see as we continue going, if that's, uh, the direction we're going to take. Um, so we've gone through this part. And again, if you do have questions, please, I'm, I'm more than happy to go back, uh, and, and ask those. So now we want you to uh, reflect on the following statements. And I think that this part also ties in to that, uh, vow to do better piece or the, those, you know, I, uh, uh, identify how to do better. How, do, what does it mean? And these are questions that we want to ask the listener or the trainees what does it mean to own your part of a situation what does that actually mean does that mean taking full responsibility over me being a bad person no of course not that's not what we're talking about and that's not the point of an apology because if i was a bad person i wouldn't apologize i wouldn't feel the need to apologize right there's this old joke um that um you know the and we've learned this all as mediators through our uh, communication skills programs that there's a difference between guilt and shame and guilt is a really really good thing guilt is that moral compass showing oh wait i think i did something that may have hurt somebody so it's that internal alarm that now allows you to correct that behavior now shame is a really bad thing and shame is like voting for the political party that you don't like right or that that you know that that's kind of the joke but the the, the difference is Guilt doesn't mean that you're that that what you intended to do was uh, with an intent to hurt. 
It just means you realize that was the outcome. So owning your part of the situation is a very healthy aspect in, in, in communication and in, in, in building trust in a relationship. What level of detail do you want to go in with your trainees? So when you start talking about where are there examples in your life where it was difficult to own your part in a situation, warning, that could be a very tricky question. Self-reflection on some of these versus audible um, um, discussion is important because sometimes we can talk about things that we might not be prepared to handle as trainers. So keep that in mind as you go through. So that's where a little bit of taking a look at the materials, what's coming up next. And throughout this, this is also why we want you to review and, and, and attend this situation, uh, attend this training so that you can see where, where do you want to push the limit and where do you want to stay within a very safe boundary? Um, where are examples in your life where you're able to own your, 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 your part, right? And so it goes back to that statement, throwing stones in glass houses, how, what level of discussion you want to get into with people. Again, there is just sort of an overarching warning with that. Now, jumping to conclusions, there's going to be a video following this as well, um, and you can come up with any situation that you would like, right? So the situation that we have here, when I was in school, I sat in the exact same seat in every class. One day, another student was sitting in my seat and I was annoyed. So does the other student owe me an apology? How do we react to something? Now, let's also assume that that morning I was, my alarm didn't go off. Um, my kids didn't do their, their homework or didn't clean up after themselves. And I was cut off on the way into school, right? You add, you can add these situations and we can start taking a look where things can escalate and where we start expecting apologies. We can start taking a look that my day's already gone bad. My kids obviously didn't, uh, uh do that. They did that because they expected me to. So they did that on purpose. I got cut off on purpose. And now this guy stole my chair on purpose. So we can start seeing how we can create our own negative situations. We want, um, this is a great video. Uh, I am going to share this one. So just let me go back to screen two. And hopefully we don't have too big of an ad. So you think you know wigs, but do you really? <laughs> First up, we've got, it's a warm and pleasant Saturday in Denver, Colorado. Spring is springing, folks are brunching, dogs' tails are wagging, babies are napping. Let's for a moment focus in on one special Coloradan, Gail. Hey, I need to talk to you about something and a meeting will be done in 30 minutes. Oh crap. What is it? What day is it? Did I forget to pay rent? No, I totally paid rent. We're getting evicted. We're totally getting evicted. I've never been evicted before. There's not enough time for me to find somewhere else to live. I'm going to have to go back to Texas with my mom. I can't go back to Texas. She's never known. Now let's pause for a moment here to give you, audience, a little background. Gail has lived in this rented house with the same roommate for over a year. She has never been late on rent. She keeps a tidy home. And the few times she has needed to contact her landlord, their interactions have been mutually satisfying. I did scratch the floor a little bit before putting scratch pads on my new chair. It's been pretty clear. You see, like what Gail is doing here is falling into a trap many of us fall into a thinking trap. He took the furnace and he saw the scratches. Of all the different and thinking traps, Gail is exhibiting jumping to conclusions. She is making assumptions without seeking more information. On top of that, she's blaming herself for the assumed eviction. Of course, don't get scratched. I'm freaking out. Now, let's just pause here. What could Gail do to avoid freaking out? She could stop. Well, she's already stopped, but you get the point. Ask. Why would my landlord evict me? What backs that up? 
think. What are other reasons my roommate might need to talk to me? Something on the brighter side, maybe? Realize. Oh, shoot. Our thoughts are powerful, and I can be in charge of choosing the healthy ones. Ah, uh, exactly. Oh, hey. What did you want to talk to me about? You have tickets to the show. Isn't it sold out? That's amazing. I thought you were going to tell me we were getting evicted. Ah, uh, you see, all is okay in Gale's world. Thinking traps can wreak havoc in a life. They're dangerous. But with the proper tools and taking a moment to stop, ask, think, and realize, you can keep a clear head to handle whatever your roommate actually wanted to talk to you about. One concept that I use quite a bit is that um, we nothing ever works out as good or as bad as we imagine it to be. And I remember uh, when I was a kid and my mom, would, I did something uh, bad. Um, I got in trouble and my mom would say, wait till your dad gets home. And then that two hour period until my dad arrived was probably the worst two hours of my entire life, right? It's he's going to kill me or I'm going to be in so much trouble. And it's you start creating these stories in your head and you become very emotional. And then my dad would come home and he'd say, all right, well, you know, it's, you're grounded tonight. Or, or, you know, it would be something so nominal that that at the end, all that the real punishment was me sitting down and waiting for the two hours. So. Where does jumping to conclusions come in when we start talking about an apology? Well, there's a couple of things. Sometimes we also, there's and there's a couple of points that we want to talk about here. It is uh, when we jump to conclusions, we also sometimes demand an apology that isn't required. Does that make sense? We create a narrative that doesn't exist, and so therefore we can strain a relationship without somebody knowing. It's kind of like having a dream that you got into a fight with your with your spouse or your partner, and then waking up and actually being upset with them, even though none of it really happened. It all happened just in the dream. So now, well, how do you navigate that? So that's one one sort of thing that that we talk about. Uh, we talk about the fortune telling, the labeling, and the mind reading, and the reasons that we go through it. But all in all, what we're leading to is that it can cause an elevated state, an emotionally elevated state, an anxiety, if you will. So how can we avoid that? So when we come to the table to start talking about uh, whether uh, an action needs to be reviewed, we come to it and we are responsive instead of reactive. And that's the idea. So now we're going to start taking a look at some strategies on how to avoid that. The SAT uh, uh, methodology that was shown in the video is great, but you slow down, you think, you ask what information could help. What are other competing hypotheses? Am I uh, favoring a single hypothesis? You, you, you need information. Full information is always, always best. So how do you get that information? That's asking those open-ended questions, and that's about talking about it. Um, and again, we want to avoid that reactive state. So in our next segment, we're going to start talking about how do we get to understand what it is that, let's say an apology will be due at the end, but what are we apologizing for? We've seen a lot of different videos, I'm sure, with Brene Brown uh, about uh, the, the the coffee spilling cartoon uh, where she spilled coffee on herself because her husband um, arrived home late. And so she was extra tired. So she had an extra cup of coffee. And that's why she So where does an apology begin? Where is it needed? And so that's a really important part. And now we're talking, doing a callback to our 2018 training that was called Confidence and Communication. And that's where we started talking about the I statement. And walking through the I statement, the way I do it is I say, this is a mathematical formula. I feel because, like when something happens, I feel this way because of this. So what I need is this. And you're just simply not allowed to use the word you and any part of this. So what that does is it slows down our speech. It makes us very methodical and responsive instead of reactive. It slows down our thinking, which is great. 
Um, and then we also have some uh, additional resources here and we have um, uh, some good examples on creating it. Now, this you can actually spend quite a bit of time because I personally believe that if everybody learned the I statement effectively and had time to practice it, the world overall would be a much better place. I think that, that this simple uh, exercise in and of itself in relationships would be incredible if we all used it. So take a little bit more time and go through this with everybody. Let's start coming up with different scenarios. We can come up with the chair scenario. When somebody takes my chair, I feel uh, that it was done perhaps on purpose and disrespected. The reason I felt I, I feel this exceptionally today is because I was cut off. And, and this. so what I need is uh, uh, in the future uh, to discuss that, you know, to discuss where we're sitting. I'm somebody that enjoys sitting in that seat, right? You can start really creating that scenario and build anyone that you want. And also, if you've gotten to previous conversations, the callback with your trainees is uh, an amazing opportunity. So if they come up with a, uh, through just discussion with the group, and they come up with something that was relevant, that there was a certain amount of time, bringing that up and saying, how can we deliver an I statement around that circumstance? That's a great callback. And I see that Frida's made a comment about um, the NVC process applying. Sorry? I said, I see Frida's made a comment that it's the NVC process, Don. Nonviolent, nonviolent communication. Thanks, yeah. Frida. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, for sure. It's uh, the nonviolent communication piece. Um, we discussed that, I think, in the kindness and communication. Uh, training as well. So that's another callback that can be made, but those are really, really relevant points. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate that. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Um, this is what happens when we say you, we don't use an I statement, you're right? You're wrong. You need to listen to me. Um, so now we can play around with these scenarios. What's a better way in an I statement to say you're wrong, you need, or any one of these. Now we can practice that here. We've all done the I statement before. So there's, there's, but, it, and if you want to change the slide as well and add things or different comments, or if you want to deal with it in a different way, that is the, the uh, interactivity that you certainly can have as the facilitator. We want to move now into diffusing, con uh, diffusing conflict. Now this was our 2019 uh, training. Again, all of that is accessible. And at the very end of this, we will go to the website and uh, show you all the different trainings, how to download them, and all the different worksheets and where they are. But this was from our 2019 training, uh, Diffusing Conflict at Work and at Home, um, which kind of, you know, in hindsight, now that uh, we know that uh, COVID came in 2020, it was perfect timing. Um, so, we want to start talking about emotional reactions. We want to start talking about triggers, how to diffuse them, and again, create that uh, reaction versus response ideal. We use specific words, and it's important because as you can see, we start talking about the difference of positions and interests, but we the next um, aspect that we have is the crossword puzzle. And so the crossword puzzle is right here. We have the solution. Um, down here, the words for our own crossword is message, trigger, apologize, diffuse. And we have the resource of the completed crossword puzzle uh, at the end, right? So the want is the position, right? So, you know, it's, it's it, we can start filling this out as we get um, through this. It's really helpful. It's a fun game, especially if you can print it out and you have people in person. I still believe some people do that, uh, meet in person. Um I'll then, add in that the answer key, Don, is part of our PowerPoint. It's just hidden for today's purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm not seeing it, but it is in there. Um, I'm not really sure the best way for us to do it. Uh, perhaps just actually going through it. I guess when we do it next month, if you're doing it through Zoom, it's saying, okay, what do you think number one is? sort of thing or does anybody know what any of them are right that sort of thing let somebody say you know type in six in the answer or one in the answer and then we can start filling that in the art of listening 
training that we did in 2020 is what we're going to be discussing now. That was the art of listening um, presentation. That was the title. Um, and there's a lot of learning seeds in that. Um, it's about uh, the habits that we need. There's a lot of points here. Uh, all of these are open for discussion. And one ask, one way to train this is to say, do you guys believe that, or did, does everybody here believe that listening requires patience? Do you, how much patience does it require? Is it a skill or is it something that, uh, is it nature versus nurture? The whole point is to get the audience to be reflective of listening. We sometimes just believe listening is something that, that happens. We're trying to turn it into something that you need to be active. It's not a passive thing. Uh, a Listening is an action. It's not something passive. So we want that switch to happen with our listeners. So now we are going to start uh, paraphrasing. This is one of my favorite um, sort of realizations. And you see this with people. When you say, I never said he stole my money. I ask people to paraphrase that. Now, how they paraphrase that uh, is really how they heard it, right? That's what a paraphrase is. This statement, the I never said he stole my money, actually means seven different things, depending on which word you emphasize. And if you see here, I never said he stole my money, so it wasn't me who said it. I never said he stole my money. It was a lie. It was just, I, it was never done. I never said he stole my money. It was implied. I never said he stole my money. It was her. I never said he stole my money. I gave it to him. I never said he stole my money. It was somebody else's. And I never said it was, he stole my money. It was my wallet. So this is where the paraphrase becomes extraordinarily important, right? And the way that I do this part is I say, somebody just said to me, I never said he stole my money or even better texted it to me. So I can't see any emphasis whatsoever. And I reply with, don't worry, I'll go find him. I'll go find who did it. And they're like, no, I, it, it's, it's, it was somebody else's money that you're like, they're, they're saying you didn't understand me at all. I actually, in my intent was trying to be a great friend, but in my action, I actually wasn't because I didn't understand. I didn't take the time to listen. So that's where the paraphrase becomes extraordinarily important. Empathy is great. Um, the empathy examples, and we start talking about the difference between sympathy and empathy. Uh, empathy, we we discussed in, in our kindness and communication presentation back in 2021. Uh, we really focused on that. Sorry, Cindy, go ahead. <laughs> it works. The hand works. <laughs> uh, Don, I thought just to just to pause for facilitators, that last segment that you did of I never said I never said he stole my money. That would be a great interaction with any of your you know participants physically. Just get them to see it any way they want and listen for the intonation on the words seven times or, you know, popcorn in and out. I just thought it was just crossing my mind when you were reading it uh, to make sure that other other new facilitators had that opportunity to think about it from that angle too. Oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, and if they were virtual, they can also, you know, seek seven volunteers to read their statement, right? So, And if you're yeah. doing, and, and that's a great point, Cindy, because if you're doing a presentation and there are five, six people, don't set it up as a webinar, set it up as a regular Zoom. And so to allow for a little bit more feedback and interactivity between yourself and, and the people at, in your workshop. So it really depends on where your comfort level is. With the, I never said he stole my money. I do a big grand thing about it. I move people in and around the room. Okay. Who are the I people? Who are the never people? Who are the, the, the money people? And everybody stands in a different area. And I go, who really thinks that are hundred percent correct. And there's always two people in different areas. And I said, well, one of you is correct. That sort of thing. And, and then I bring them in and, and, and we start kind of battling it out why they think they're correct. And then of course, with only two people, I always choose a third one. 
uh, and say, well, you're both wrong. And so it's, 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 it's now, how do we uncover that? Because we get so caught up in, this is what you said, this is what happened. And so that is the one and only truth that exists. And that's where conflict can arise because again, it melds perfectly into the next step where we're starting to lack empathy, where we're starting to take a look at what we heard, what we understood instead of what you said and what you meant. And for great communication, it's all about listening and asking questions. There was an interesting um, discussion that I had, uh, uh, an article that I read actually, and they said the number one reason for separation and divorce isn't because of infidelity. It isn't because of finances. It isn't because all those things that we learn growing up, that this is why you're going to end up in in, um, in a divorce. It's it, it was explained that the real reason, the number one reason for relationship breakdown is uncommunicated expectations. And this is about restoring that and bringing back a commute, like communicating your expectations. And that avoids the, even the, the need for an apology because of all the groundwork that we've done throughout. So when we start talking about examples of empathy, we start, uh, has everybody seen the uh, Brene Brown video on that? And I think, you know what, just for the sake of it, I'll show it again. Um, just so we can get a really good idea of what we're talking about. You probably don't miss the print for business cards, but did you know we also print that and that? So what is empathy and why is it? Very different than sympathy. Empathy fuels oh. connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's, a, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, I'm down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is... Ooh, it's bad, uh-huh. Uh, no, you want a sandwich? Um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time because you know what? Someone just shared something with us. It's incredibly painful and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least, you know, you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. Don's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. So we also have another video that uh, we can use in this because a lot of times 
that that video sometimes is is seen quite a bit if you've never seen it obviously please use it i love the breakdown the four aspects right perspective taking removing judgment recognizing emotion and communicating it, it, it i like the aspect of just like the i statement with empathy it can be reduced to some sort of logical or mathematical sort of approach for me the way my brain works it has really really helped and it helps to communicate that as an idea outside people think of empathy as a uh, this emotional eq no it's something that can be practiced it's a skill just like everything else and that's what we want to break it down to you want to have an improved relationship it's going to take time and energy that's what we're saying. Now, for those who haven't seen It's Not About the Nail and time allowing, I would recommend showing both the videos if the crowd hasn't seen them. The empathy video and the It's Not About the Nail video because It's Not About the Nail video really takes the ball from the end of this video and carries it another 10 yards. So what it does is it starts taking showing you that when you show empathy, that there's a connection that can really be established and it's done in a fairly humorous way so it's nice um we also have the inside out video um if you've seen this video or you know what we're talking about the communication skills of empathic listening it's it's probably the most important mediation movie ever made uh, thank you, Pixar, for helping us out uh, on so many different things. If you're ever in a mediation, you can't get clients to agree. Just say, take 90 minutes, watch this movie and come back to the table and you're going to have an agreement. Guaranteed. Um, uh, well, maybe not guaranteed. I might be pushing it. Uh, it, it. But this video, again, all the links are in the notes, as you can see here on the bottom right. Take advantage. Do your research before you walk into the uh, into the training and use the one that's going to be appropriate for you. For the purposes of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be talking about the four aspects, uh, like next month, I mean, I'm going to be talking about the four aspects of uh, of communication, and I will be showing the inside out video. That's how I'm going to do it, because it's just, it's such a, it's done in such a wonderful way. Uh, and if you've seen the video, you know what I'm speaking of. And again, all the links are there. Uh, uh, if time allowing, I can go back at the end of this and show the videos that we may have missed. Um, in discussing empathy, this is, we've given some points, how to create an empathic statement or, you know, what are the notions are, you know, when, how to avoid using at least and the difference between sympathy and empathy and really digging deep down into what it means. This is a great and wonderful opportunity to have a discussion with the people in your training about what empathy means to them and how it could help. And then when we start talking about the possibility down the road of an empathic apology, what could that look like? So it's a really important aspect of this um, for, for future communication. Now we start talking about managing expectations. And this goes back to what I was saying, uncommunicated, uh, uncommunicated expectations are the leading cause of relationship strain. It is really out there sort of idea that we've come up with in this about expectations but when it's broken down because it's not really discussed and that's what i mean by out there we didn't we're certainly not breaking the wheel here um or inventing the wheel sorry um what we're talking about with expectations is is you know really when we break down our communication into bite-sized nuggets that's how it is mostly uh achievable for people who are just being introduced to this information to move forward again this training isn't for a veteran communicator or negotiator or mediator this is for people who are just being introduced to another topic for their consideration for conflict resolution day so keep that in mind the audience that you're talking to now you're talking to an audience that knows more, elevate the content, elevate the speech, start challenging each other uh, and creating greater ideas. That's fantastic. 
but if you're working with a group of people it's like i heard about this uh the apology is something that that uh i'm interested in learning more about keep in mind that these ideas that we are are familiar and comfortable with might be new to them so we really want to break them down into bite-sized bits um how to overcome your own expectations is also a great uh a great self-reflection piece um this video you know a lot of people might not have seen this one so i am going to share this one it's a tony robbins video uh and it's great uh, winter is coming and i want you to know give me one second i just have to share the right screen there we go when it comes i want you to prepare if all you do is <laughs> Don, is there supposed to be sound in this video? Music. Okay. Just music. Yeah, this one is it is it what's great about this video for me, it's the concept behind it. When we start talking about expectations communicated or otherwise, and, and you really the, the more you bring in uh examples here, the better. Uh where for example, this past 10 days for me. Uh, and, and and some people know this and some people don't, has been exceptionally hard. Uh, our family, Pat, who's, who's quite young, um, was uh, suddenly ill. And for about three or four times this past week, we thought she was going to die. She was at the vet. She was at the hospital. She underwent a couple of surgeries. It was, it was, it was insane. And my expectation was that the people around me would know to either give me space when I needed it or come talk to me and, and give me a soothing and comfort when I needed it. That was an expectation that wasn't communicated. So I either want you beside me or I want you away from me. And none of that was communicated. Right. Or you can see how that example can 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 come around come around. And all I needed to say is, you know, I need some time. I'm having trouble coping or I need, uh, you know, right now I could use a hug or a little bit of understand. And so it's sorry. Go ahead, Cindy. Good example, Don. And I hope Bailey's OK. Oh, yeah. Bebe's back. She's eating everything now again. She's uh, I, I told uh, my dog that uh, losing a gallbladder is uh, the worst way to lose weight. But whatever works. Um uh, but but it's it, it's a really personal thing. People can can really when you're trying to come up with an example to really talk about this about what expectations could mean. Don't be afraid to be personal. Don't be detailed personal. Don't talk about you know trauma. Uh, you don't want them to. You don't want p other people to experience trauma. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to open up about an idea as opposed to you know oh this is where I went wrong. Because that's where you can really offend people. If we say, if you did this, you did it wrong. Then we're talking about visceral. You said, you, like, what was your intent in saying that? My intent in going through this is to say there's just a different avenue. This material that we're giving you now isn't taught everywhere. We don't learn this in school. Many of us don't learn this at home. So this is our, for many, for the vast majority of people, this is their first introduction to taking a look at the apology as a skill, as opposed to what we're inundated with on uh, social media and and, um, uh, and other forms of media, books and, and, and so forth. So this is a very specific training. So keep that in mind. You want to help give people a pass. It doesn't matter what you did. Now you have tools to do something different different and that's a really important thing right and that's set up uh expectations for the future now 
forgiveness. And this is a really important one. So now I've received an apology. How do I forgive? And there's that whole idea that forgiveness is the most selfish thing that you can do. For me in Alberta, I, I recall shortly after um, the Columbine school shooting, there was uh, the Tabor school shooting here in Alberta, um, where one student was was murdered. And it happened to be um, a priest's son. And one of the first things the priest said in an interview was, I forgive the child who shot my son and killed him. And I, I that still resonates with me to today, that ability to do that, that ability to forgive and the weight that that removes. So we have a quote from Nelson Mandela, and uh, we, we've kind of gone, we're, we're not sure if it's Desmond Tutu or Nelson Mandela. We do believe that one of them quoted the other, or they kept quoting the other, and so that uh, it becomes a little bit of a, of a challenge. But there is no future without forgiveness. Coming from Nelson Mandela, uh, when you understand what he did in South Africa with apartheid, and that's another tangent that you can go into within your conversation. It's a really, really great um um, way to do it now how do we uh accept an apology thanks i acknowledge what you said i accept where you're trying to go you don't have to say i forgive you same way as you don't need to say i am sorry if you go through the four stages the four steps of an apology and you're coming up with a plan together to avoid situations like that it's i acknowledge the effort that you're putting in this is fantastic let's work on a plan that's forgiveness um where there's difficulty accepting an apology uh it, it's it's you, you might want to continue that conversation what remained that is unexpressed what because again uncommunicated expectations are what leads if we believe that uncommunicated expectations are what lead to further conflict well what hasn't been communicated yet okay um the fresh start approach to to it um you know if you really want to delve deeper and i would love to have a a uh, a coffee with anybody here to discuss this the idea that uh if something really or more traumatic happens uh sometimes you know mourning that relationship or knowing that is forever changed and ending that relationship is a healthy thing to do because the next step means that I have accepted that that relationship is over, but now this me who knows how to set boundaries and this new you after this, on the other side of that, now we can move forward in a new relationship based off new boundaries, new expectations, new values, new respect, new guidelines. It's a fairly broad concept, but again, that's it, it's it depends on the crowd that you're talking to. Are they able to accept that and absorb that, and be able to comment that and 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 have that be a uh, part of it? Uh, the anger mountain is a very cool um, graphic. What we're talking about here is. The idea, and, and the this is this is also a fairly complex idea. The idea is this. If we, what we do is we tell ourselves we're not allowed to be angry. I'm not allowed to be angry. I can't be angry. I can't be angry. And what we want to say is the exact opposite. You are sometimes very much allowed to be angry. And it's a natural thing. And all of us are angry at one point or, or, or another. What we're trying to do is avoid acting angry. That's where it becomes unacceptable. And the second that I talk to myself and have that internal conversation and say, you know, I have reason to be angry. Only then do I calm down. And if you look at yourself the next time that you're angry, look yourself in the mirror and I go, I'm angry and this is the reason, you will feel suddenly less angry. What the anger mountain talks about is something we want to avoid completely. What it talks about is you're walking on a plane, something happens, there's a trigger, you suppress it, you don't deal with it, you don't communicate with it. And then there's this extreme reaction 
that it's we start talking about violent communication and we start talking about all sorts of uh, bad outcomes. And then at the end, we kind of go down on like feel that huge amount of guilt. And then we go back to that plane and only to repeat that same thing. What we're saying is that if we acknowledge our anger and communicate and deal with it in an effective and healthy way, we can just go through the mountain. We don't have to experience that roller coaster ride of the explosion, the apology, and so forth. In essence, what we are saying is that the best apologies are the ones that were never necessary in the first place because we went through a full and healthy communication process prior. That's the best apology. So this kind of brings us to the end of those materials. And now we're going to start reviewing a couple of other options. And we start ta talking about this. I'm truly sorry for poking fun at you. Although it wasn't my intention to hurt your feelings, I recognize that my words were hurtful. What can I do to make it better? Now we can try teasing you as wrong. I see this hurt your feelings and I was wrong. I will not do this again. That's pretty good. It's still missing something though, isn't it? Right? And this is where the challenge is. This isn't perfect. Because now I will not do this again. What can I do to help ensure that it doesn't do, happen again? What plan can we create to ensure that this stops here, that that action doesn't, doesn't re repeat itself? And it's per like we left this out on purpose for you to be able to go through this and, and challenge. Again, this is great, but it's still not perfect. So now, you know, what can we do to make it perfect? We always want the, uh, our listeners to think. Um, I know I shouldn't have done that. I know I probably should have asked you first. I know it can be a bull in a china shop. You can start seeing how we can really start rewording these. These are better. The first ones in these first two, we said we're pretty good at the beginning, but now we can make them better. And all that takes is time and experience. I'm not going to be able to apologize perfectly in every situation, but my intent is going to be just that. How can I apologize better? How can I be there better? How can I create a stronger, healthier, more productive relationship with you? That's my goal. Uh, we have some evaluations. Uh, if you were to, uh, do, do we do we want to try them right now? I guess for facilitators, we want this one, right? Yes, yes. Um, if we could ask you guys to actually, and let me uh, do a new share. If we could ask you to uh, raise your phones and take out your cameras and do that QR code uh, to be able to give us the uh, feedback. I do recall that last year we had some great suggestions and from Train the Trainer, we actually did another Train the Trainer uh, in the lead up uh, because some of the suggestions we got were just fantastic. So keep that in mind. We're, we're, our, our goal is to always adapt, move forward, move with you to create a better uh, training uh, I'm going to move on. I'll leave this actually up for another uh, like 10 seconds here. Please uh, go through and give us an evaluation uh, of uh, of this. It just does help us uh, not only for this year's training, but for our past trainings and future ones. I believe this QR code here, um, if you were to use this, this would take you directly to the website. Is that correct? Yes. No? Yes, I believe so. No? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that takes us yeah, to the website. Should, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you had the facilitated QR code up there. No. Okay. Um, Don, you have a question in the queue from Lisa. Is What is the name of the training? Lisa, I'm not clear what you're asking, Don. This training is called the Apology Unraveled. Okay. I made is the it... assumption that that's what we get a link for. Oh, okay. The train. You are correct. Yeah, yeah. So it's the, the apology unraveled. And then again, when you're going through this, you're able to uh, uh, put any resources, websites to your own institution, to your own brand, to your own whatever, add your names, your facilitators. Uh, I will add in here, um, yes, Afina and company. Uh, when we do it as part of the conflict resolution day. And of course, thank you all for, 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 for participating. If anybody would like to stay back, ask questions. Uh, I think that we can, um, how can we allow, um, uh, 
<laughs> we can still allow them to ask questions through the um, chat box, question I, and answer. I'm just going through and I'm allowing everybody to talk. Okay. Oh, you're, you're, you're making them present. I'm making them present. Yeah. So if and, anybody has a question, they can put their hand up then. <laughs> oh. And it works. Allow to talk. Allow to talk. Well, while everybody is coming into the conversation, in the chat will be the link to the direct link of the worksheet slide deck that you saw. But if you actually go to the 2023, if you actually go to our website, conflictresolutionday.ca, and you go to 2023, you will scroll down and you will see not only the slide link, because it's a big file, you'll also see the evaluations, you'll see a facilitator worksheet for a bunch of apologies of which you can have your your facilitate your participants be the judge. Yeah. And so, you can work on it together to improve it. And so this is the 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 the, the website um uh where all the information is. If you want to take a look at some of the historical resources that we have, all the past years trainings 22, 21, 2019, uh and and all the materials are are there as well. Um the 2023 um to download everything, where do I go again? Go uh, to so present go to 2023, go to presentations. There we go. And then scroll down. And presentation materials there you go the link there to everything that you were presented the poster any worksheets and of course within all of your slide deck or all of the links to the videos that were shared with you today now uh, a really important note is that the videos require a internet connection okay they require an internet connection so you could technically download those videos and embed them into the presentation if you know you're going to be in an area without Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind. If you have questions on how to do that, um, we, we just stay on a little bit longer and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through that. But you can you can put that in. Um, and I think I see Tracy's hand raised up, Don. Okay. Yeah, Tracy, just go right ahead. I think you can unmute yourself. I think we're good oh hi it's tracy for the second time <laughs> i didn't have my I... <laughs> oh yeah no that's all right so it just looks like i'll just lower the hand here um oh i guess I everything's can't. awesome all right <laughs> there's a glitch there we go lower all attendees hands there is a glitch there we go it's removed uh, so folks um Thank you all for attending. Um, I believe we're about 10 minutes out. I'll still be here. Uh, we'll just be chatting for the next few minutes uh, about the presentation. I do have to say, again, uh, I, I can't forego without at least mentioning one person, Chris Menzies, uh, for uh, collecting all of this information, um, listening to us um, debate uh, patiently and uh, doing what he wanted to do anyway and creating a wonder. I'm just kidding. But creating a wonderful uh, um, the set of, of information for, for us, uh, for this presentation today. So Chris, um, you may not be here, but thank you very, very much for everything. Or you might be here. I see it. I do see it. Chris. Um, I think he is here. Um, and the, the one thing I will add to our trainees who are here today, if you're planning on presenting your own, um, presentation or session that when Don and I take over next month and do our own conflict resolution day, I'll add each of the segments or the key areas, Don will be tying everything back to how it relates to an apology. It's something we've just blasted through today, but uh, you'll see a, a certainly a more in-depth session next month. It's also, actually, I also want to highlight that if you would like to hold an event, if you would like to hold your own event, we will put that on our uh, website and you can see right here, notify us. Um, we will, if you wish to host your own event, you can organize your own event. 
uh, we can help you uh, how to offer that. All the information, like we said, is there. Please use your social media, put it out there. Um, we have conflict resolution day activity ideas, but this is a really good opportunity for you to get out there in the community. Uh, we've had people in the past, if you're looking for a location, going to your local public library and saying on October 19th, I would love to be able to do a presentation. That's for free. And then they will let all their subscribers know as well. A community center can sometimes um, donate that space, especially because uh, the training is at no cost. So if it's something, you know, uh, I think we even had people in the Glencoe Cup uh, before do that. So that's in Calgary. Um, so there, no matter where you are, there is an opportunity if you sort of work from home or if you wanna do it through Zoom, Obviously, putting it out there is is wonderful. That being said, our presentation is going to happen at 11.30 in the morning. We are going to be recording that and uploading that to the website uh, and on our YouTube channel as soon as possible after its completion. So you would just be able to show the training that we offer on October 19th to anybody there as well. So all those options are available. Please keep that in mind. Don, just an interruption there. This train the trainer will also be posted to YouTube for those those that are interested in facilitating but missed attending. So we will have that one up shortly. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, folks, if, if there's any other questions, ask away. Otherwise, um, please enjoy the rest of your day. And and um, uh, it's been a real pleasure. I'm doing this and it's been a real pleasure. I, th I think this is my fourth or fifth time uh, being able to do this. I enjoy doing it and it's, it's wonderful working with uh, with this team. So I look forward to uh, next year where Yas is going to continue being one of the chairs. So this is great. I think you should return as co-chair with Cindy this time, Don. Sorry, my internet just cut out. I missed it. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs>